Well, we're here with three of the stars from that 1984 men's gymnastics team. Actually, I've been told you guys are legends. Mitch, I've heard that you plan on introducing several new elements to the sport of gymnastics here tonight. That's correct, Tim. I plan on doing the Gaylord 3 on parallel bars, which is a triple back salto, landing directly in the handstand with my toes pointed. Well, we Eight years after he competed. And Peter Vidmar, the captain of the team, what does it feel like to be back in Los Angeles? Well, first of all, I did that skill last week, Mitch, no way, so man. it's old no news. Hey, but, uh, it's great to be here. I think the hardest part is getting through this interview because we're having too much fun joking around, but it's a, it's a thrill. It's great to be back with the guys. Remember, there, there's four legends here, I guess, if you want to call us that, because you're here, Tim. So. They didn't invite me. <laughs> Bart, we hear that... Uh, it's been eight years for you also, and you actually need help to get through your exhibition tonight. Yeah, that's why I invited a couple of little ladies to help me. Uh, Paul Hunt's two little girls, Jessica and Lindsay, and we've choreographed a thing that I think you'll enjoy. It's pretty fun. Well, we're looking forward to it, guys. And they get younger. Hillary Grivich, 14. That's an average age these days from Huntsville, Texas. She drives 125 miles round trip every day to train with Bella and Martha Carolla, the 1990 junior champion, Hillary Grivich. And she's in the floor exercise. And back at the world championships last fall, winning the silver medal, she had a lot of pressure on those young shoulders of hers. She led the American team on every single event, going up first, and that is a very difficult position. Full twisting double back. This is certainly an experience for these young gymnasts performing on the same floor with most likely their idols and the legends of the sport. She just pulls those double backs right around, knows right where the floor is. Package of dynamite. Hillary Grivich, four feet eight, 14 years old. She weighs 81, and she's a champion whose dream is a medal in the Olympic Games. This is her second pass. Now watch the first skill she does. It's called a whip bat. It's like a back handspring, but with no hands, and right through to a double bat. Now let us move over to a University of Nebraska graduate student. Nebraska has always turned out good gymnasts, and Patrick Kirksey is one of them. A tall man for a gymnast. He's 5'10". Actually very big for a gymnast, Jim. He uh, weighs 170 pounds. That's 20 heavier than I've ever heard in the sport of gymnastics. Former all-around NCAA champion and member of the 1990 NCAA championship team in Lincoln for the University of Nebraska. Of course, what everybody recognizes on rings, he starts right off with the Iron Cross. You have to be strong to do rings. Patrick will do a couple of them for us. But you know, you just can't be strong on this event. You also have to swing. He'll show us a swing from the handstand. Right here, this is called a giant. Oh, a little bit of bent elbows there. No judges today, though, so no deductions through the whole day. <laughs> and a nice dismount, half in, half out. The pride of Atlanta, Georgia, where he was born and lives, and the pride of Lincoln, Nebraska, where he goes to Nebraska. And we'll come back to the former Los Angeles with more of the Hilton Superstars of Gymnastics in just a moment.
U.S. Olympic gold welcomes you back to the Hilton Superstars of Gymnastics and a 15 year older from Edmond, Oklahoma. A couple of tens on a recent trip to Europe in the balance beam, but tonight it is not the balance beam. Sharon Shannon Miller is on the bar. And she won a silver medal on this event at the World Championships. And in fact, she's even improved the routine since last fall. She has two new skills, the first of which is incredibly exciting. I've only seen one other, one other woman do it. She's a Latina of the former Soviet Union. And it comes up right here. It's a full twist recap. It's called a Thomas, invented by Kurt Thomas on the men's high bar. Second really smooth, reverse hecked. And she has a nice dismount sequence, full pirouette, right into a full twisting double well back. Done. Oh boy. Well done. I'll tell you what, this routine can stand up to anyone in the world. Ninth I grader from it. Edmonton, Oklahoma, Shannon Miller, and gets a hug from her coach. Fine performance for Shannon. And now Chris Waller, veteran of the men's Olympic team. He's probably one of our top gymnasts at this point, and he is going to showcase his best event, Pommel Horse. He's brought home just about every, every medal that you can on this event, national champion, NCAA champion. Most difficult element will be right here. He'll travel the whole horse in flair while turning his body the opposite direction. He's circling, very difficult. Chris also has improved his difficulty. He's traveling back all the way across the horse. The thing that's so hard about pommel horse is you never get a break at all. No stops, no time to catch your breath. And oh. He needed a little bit of time right there, and he said, I'm going to take it. His handstand. It is not competition, Tim, but it is performance for some of the legends of the sport here. And Chris Waller and the rest of them are feeling the pressure. Well, we all know her. If you haven't known her the last couple of years, you haven't been following gymnastics. Kim Zemesko, the current world champion out of Houston, Texas, where she grew up and dropped in on Bella Caroli one day. And here she is. One of Kim's greatest attributes at least according to Bella Caroli, is her ability to really concentrate and focus during a competition. In fact, Kim even admits it herself, she's much better in competition than in practice. That probably drives some of her teammates a little crazy, Kathy. Two layouts in a row. Now keep in mind these gymnasts are performing with spotlights, that's something they don't normally do in competition. Steps of two former gymnasts of her coach, Bella Caroli. Of course, Nadia Colmanich and Mary Lou Retton. We'll, we will see later. It's a double back. <laughs> Great landing. Something she was known for at the World Championships. Every single event, she came up with that great landing. And as you said, Kathy, the only American woman ever to win a gold in the world. Here's her most difficult pass on the balance beam. Two layout step outs in a row. You can see she had to check her balance a little bit. I have a feeling that had a little something to do with spotlights. It all started back in 1972. It all started with Olga Corbett. Believe that she's the second best on her team. Now watch this. Watch this. Back up. Be right to the other bar. Has that been done before by never, a girl? Never, not by any human that I know of. Look at that. And she's second best, I don't believe it. This then is a historic performance you're watching right now in gymnastics. She's uh, Kathy Rigby's size. Oh my, wow! Olga 
Corbett, who may well be on her way to winning the individual all-around championship. Olga Corbett, who started it all in 1972 at the age of 17 years. That's old almost by today's standards, but she's the one who set the standard for those to follow. And no one has captivated an audience more than Olga Corbett in her very special way. She was so charming. And she loved the crowd, and the crowd loved her. And now the introduction here in the Forum in Los Angeles for the one you just saw 20 years ago in Munich. The applause for Olga Corbett. Now 37 years old, the mother of a 12-year-old son, but still the darling of the crowd. Jim, I watched her warming up, and I believe she's going to do the routine she did in 1972. Today, I have a good opportunity saying everyone, everybody, thank you for remembering me and uh, loving me. And uh, today I perform from my heart and everything I do, I do for you. Thank you again. Well, she still makes you smile, I'll tell you. 20 years ago, Munich, now 1982, at the Forum. Different music, but a lot of the same movements. Nothing need be said. <laughs> Olga Corbett and the music in the background. You've also heard of that music before because that came out of Montreal four years after Olga Corbett. As Olga leaves the forum, we will now turn to what happened four years later. When 14-year-old Nadia Comaneci arrived in Montreal for the 76 Olympic Games, only a few insiders knew what she was capable of. Perfection. The scoreboard, however, could not accommodate the 10.0, so they flashed a 1.0. Nonetheless, it was the first perfect 10 in Olympic history. At home in Romania, in preparation for those games, she had revolutionized the sport under the tutelage of her soon-to-be famous coach, Bella Caroli. Everyone was in awe of her physical strength and power, her innovativeness, her uncanny ability to perform perfectly under pressure. She showed no weaknesses, effortlessly performing skills that had never been done before. Every now and then you could see the little girl shine through as she tumbled and danced her way to seven perfect tens and a total of five golds, four silvers and one bronze during her two Olympic games. Her impact was immediate and will never be forgotten. And Nadia Komenich is not forgotten. Listen to the crowd as she's introduced here at the Forum. And look at the way she's dressed. I never saw that in 1976. <laughs> Thank you very much. I am 30 years old now, and when I watched this tape, it seemed like another person. 
You know, as a gymnast, I took many risks, and I was lucky that the judges liked that. But in 1989, when I took the biggest risk in my life, when I defected to come to this country, where I dreamed to live, My landing here didn't get me too many tens. <laughs> it was a difficult time for me. But I am with good people now that I was not before, and I am happy. And this is a very special evening because I can thank all of you for your support. I am back on my feet again. They wrote a song about her, as we said, Nadia Komenich, three golds, two silver, one bronze in Montreal in 76, two golds, two silver, 1980 in Moscow, and now here she is in 1992. Corbett in the same segment on U.S. Olympic gold, and there's more to come.
Mitch Gaylord, team gold medalist in those memorable 1984 Olympic Games here in Los Angeles, also took a silver in the vault and bronze medals in both the rings and parallel bars. Yet eight years later, in 1992, Mitch Gaylord says he is nervous to be on the floor with today's stars. I think I'm going to be really nervous, to be honest, because it's been a while since I've done this. And um, I know that the new gymnasts coming up are very much in shape and look great. And hopefully, you know, people won't expect the same thing from us as they're going to expect out of them or what we used to be able to do. But um, I'm just going to have fun. I'm really looking forward to it. You know, the, the new family is going to be there and, and my old family and um, a lot of people from this area that I know are going to be going. So it'll be fun. It's kind of like we're all going to be reliving it a little bit. But last night I, I met um, Olga Corbett for the first time and Nadia I had met one other time and Mary Lou was there. It's like the three legends of women's gymnastics were all in one room and it was pretty cool. I thought, wow, this is neat. Tim Daggett, you're going to have to describe what he's going to do because I didn't understand what he was telling you he was going to do in your interview. <laughs> well, Mitch was certainly playing around eight years since Mitch competed in the sport of gymnastics. Uh, but uh, quite a champion he was. Chose to do parallel bars. Just one of the events he medaled on many times throughout his career. Still looks pretty darn good, too. This skill right here, he'll go right to the L and just freeze it in that position. Mitch is an actor now. He has a sense of theatrics, and we saw that on that straddle cut catch, I think, Kathy. Double back somersault and just a small step backwards. Now 31 years old, still living in the area in Van Nuys, California. Mitch Gaylord. Let's take a look at his dismount one more time here. Spots and all, double back somersault. Real nice pop off the bars. And Mitch always knew where the ground was, even eight years after competition. And there's a teammate of Mitch Gaylord yet to come up. The blonde fellow we hear on television and remember so well. Let's meet him. Bart Connor took the Olympic gold in parallel bars in 1984, second gold with the team. He's been a world champion in parallel bars, yet it is the Olympic team gold in 1984 that excited Bart Connors the most. He tells us about it now. I think probably the, the point when I realized that we really did legitimately have a chance to win was about halfway through the compulsory round. and. Uh, as I'm sure you remember, that, that feeling of when we were really cooking, we were really on, and things were just falling into place. And I remember uh, Jim Micas, our uh, alternate, he had a little clipboard and he was keeping track of scores. And uh, it seemed like it was vaulting. I don't remember what event it was, after vaulting? But uh, maybe after rings, I don't remember, but he said, uh, hey, at this point you guys are three-tenths ahead or a point ahead. I don't remember the number. But I remember that moment because I remember thinking, oh my God, we're in first place. I didn't expect to be in first place ever during that competition. As you know, we all felt that we had a legitimate chance at a bronze, maybe a silver medal. But uh, to all of a sudden be in, in, fir be in first place and, uh, and realize what that meant, that if we continue at this pace, we could be the Olympic champions. Um, that was the biggest thrill to me. And now in the forum, Bart Connor, 14-time NCAA All-American, wearing his usual gymnastics outfit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think Bart has competed too many times in this getup here. He's enlisted the help of two young sweethearts. You'll just love this. I'm going to make you happy. Think it's just my style. Everywhere I go, Tell everyone I know that I love to see you smile. Don't want to take the trip to China. Don't want to say you end up in life. Wouldn't want to get too far where you are. The love to see you smile. around.
This was actually Bart's best event in, in competition. We never saw those moves in 84, though. Yeah. We saw something like that, though. Judges are here, unpointed toes, walking on his hand. All major directions in competition. <laughs> no deduction from the crowd, though. <laughs> Bart better be careful. These two little ones, I think, are going to steal the show here. spot there. I bet you're all thinking at home, yeah, my kids, they behave just like this. <laughs> what a thrill for these youngsters. are actually the daughters of one of the most successful gymnastics comedians in the business, Paul Hunt's children. Could be. It's that kind of night with the Hilton superstars of gymnastics, Bart Connors and helpers. Bart's really decided to try to bring gymnastics to a different level. That's And yet another member of that fabulous 1984 Olympic team of the United States of America, Peter Vidmar. Tim Daggett tells us about his teammate, Peter. July 31st, 1984, the 23rd Olympiad. Peter Vidmar, the captain of the U.S. gymnastics team, is the final competitor in the team championships. It was a storybook ending to a day that few envisioned possible. His 995 on the high bar gave the U.S. team a gold medal, defeating the world champions, the People's Republic of China. It was a moment that called for celebration. But Peter's work wasn't done. When I went into the finals, I knew I needed a 10.0 to win. And I remember uh, as I started off my routine, it had to be perfect. So I went all out from the beginning. I didn't pace myself. And when you don't pace yourself, uh, you, you cramp up, you get fatigued at the end of the routine. I started to feel those cramps halfway through my routine, and I started to panic. I thought, oh, no, you better water down your routine. You better do something different, because you're going to fall off. You don't have any energy left. And I think that little panic attack gave me the adrenaline that I needed to say, no, you're going to do everything you train for. Do the hard dismount. And I did it. Uh, I didn't know if it was going to be a 9.9. .9. I didn't know if it was going to be a 10.0. When I landed, I told myself, you know, silver medal is something to be proud of. Don't worry about it. Silver medal is okay. And then I saw the 10, and uh, I was mighty surprised. And it was great. And it was the one that I wanted to, to win for my coach. And now, in 1992, teammate of Tim Daggett's on the event that he loves the most, and has had the most success, the pommel horse. Here's Peter Vidmar. 
<laughs> Crossing his fingers, I don't think he needs to do that. Uh, this was his best event by far. <laughs> Swings Palma Horse quite a bit. Still, as you can see, just about at his 1984 form. Beautiful flares on the Palma Horse. Nice shot of just how critical the hand placement is. Scored a 10 in 1984, our Olympic champion, Peter Vidmar. I'll give him a 10 tonight. I think we got to talk to him about making a comeback. <laughs> Unfortunately, he'd have to do five other events as well. And he has to be about 10 years older before he can do that one. Oh, high, fi high five to <laughs> Mitch Gilead right there. there. I don't know about you, but this is a kick for me. I get to see my idols, my teammates, and the future of USA Gymnastics right here under one roof. And I had even more fun before the event. I don't know about you, but this is a kick for me. I get to see my idols, my teammates, and the future of USA Gymnastics right here under one roof. And I had even more fun before the event when I got to talk to Nadia, Mary Lou, Kim Zameskel, and their coach, Bella Caroli. <laughs> Bella, look at this group. You have got to be proud. What, what is your first, if you had to describe this group of gymnasts right here, how would you describe them? Gosh, what can be more satisfying in career of a coach, you know, to see your star uh, students together, and that's a work of 25 years. <laughs> Starting back in uh, those older times, uh, 70s with Nadia, continuing with Mary Lou in 84, then uh, right now uh, with uh, Kimbo going up into the fifth Olympic Games. That's, that's a great moment, and uh, I don't believe you know, it can be more satisfying than this. Nadia, all these gymnasts basically followed in your footsteps, so they had someone to look up to, to idolize. Who did you have, or did you have anyone? Because you never think of Nadia in awe of anyone. Well, it was for me. I had an idol, and my idol was Turisheva. And I always dreamed to be like, like her, and uh, I never thought that I would have a chance to compete with her and uh, to win. <laughs> And uh, she was my idol. I wanted to be like her. For me, she was. She looked great, and everything she did was perfect for me. And uh, I tried to do uh, what she did, and I did it. Well, let me tell you, that's that's my surprising, but it's very very interesting to hear. That's it's very surprising to me because all those many years, I never did realize, you know, Nadia is looking up to somebody. Now I'm I'm looking back and start to recall, you know, her gestures. And, and um, personality during the competition was the same, very imposing, very sturdy, very serious. And I, gosh, I <laughs> realize <laughs> now <laughs> that's not me, that's to reach you, was David, to you. <laughs> but that's really was neat. That's really neat, you know, to hear that, but because it's 100% right, you know. Mary Lou, sitting here. What, what is your feeling now, sitting, listening to Nadia and Bella? talk and know they, they paved the way, sort of, for you to come. What does that feel like? Oh, I, I feel like one of the luckiest, most fortunate people in the world because, I mean, it's so funny how you see the cycles. Nadia, who was my idol, I mean, I can remember back in 1976, I was seven years old, I was, you know, laying on my stomach, glued to the television, watching her. And I said, I said to my mother, I said, Mommy said, I'm going to be just like her. You know, my mom patted me on the head. She said, sure, honey, sure, you know. And she is the one that got me started. So it, it's nice to see how each generation has someone to look up to. Um, and when I first met Bella, I saw him. We were at, I think it was at a competition. And, oh, my God, Bella was there. You know, he was Bella Carolla. He was gymnastics. 
and when we kind of got together and we kind of said, hey, would you train me? Would you, you know, come down to Houston and do that? Um, I was so surprised. I said, this guy sees the potential in me. I mean, little Mary Lou from Fairmont, West Virginia. I mean, which Fairmont was not the hotbed of gymnastics at that time. Um, I was just very thrilled that he saw potential in me and that we were able to come together as a team as Nadia and Bella did before and make the success that we did in 84. Kim, what is it like for you now, sitting here? You, I mean, third generation down here, and you're still, you're still going after it with a very big competition ahead of you. Well, it kind of makes me nervous sitting next to these two, but um, uh, knowing that they put in their time and what they got out of it just pushes me to, to want to try even harder and hopefully repeat what, what they did. Do they ever just pop up in your mind every now and then, like either on the competition floor, in strange places, all of a sudden you think of Nadia, what did she feel like here, or Mary Lou, has that ever happened? Well, it was, it's kind of weird because I never remember watching Mary Lou being like unhappy or anything in the gym, and I'm always like, how is this possible? <laughs> I was Kim several times. I've never seen good actress. <laughs> Now, I know this is going to be hard to try and pick out your most vivid or most special moment in gymnastics, but what would it be? Well, almost everybody knows that the most incredible moment in my life was after I finished the compulsory exercise at the bars, and I got that first perfect 1.00. <laughs> That's supposed to be a 10. That was the most unbelievable moment in my life. I remember watching her, and it sco the score showed up 1.00, 1 yeah. all right? Yeah. yeah, this is a true story, I swear. I was at my first competition. After watching her, I started in my gymnastic lessons. I was probably about two, two foot five. I was this tiny, tiny, tiny. I could not do bars at all. <laughs> I am at my first competition. It was in Parkersburg, West Virginia. I remember this. My coach spotted me throughout this whole, co this whole bar routine. <laughs> all right, and every time a coach touches you, it's a point off. I fell a couple times. <laughs> I put my hands up in the air, and they flash a 1-0. I'm thinking, I got a 10. I got a 10 because <laughs> I remember watching Nadia get the 10. Oh, my God. I was six years, That's six, good. seven years old. <laughs> I, sw I really and honestly was convinced I got a 10, just like Nadia. And my coach had to tell me that it was a 1, and I, was, I think I cried. At least you can say that's called a grace 1-0. Well, I never scored a 10.0 or a 1.0, but I sure came bo close to both. Stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. And welcome back to the Forum in Los Angeles and the Hilton Superstars of Gymnastics. And next up from Tempe, Arizona, where she is now residing because she's being coached there, but originally from Sacramento, California, a senior in high school. This is Elizabeth Crandall, and this is her event, Kathy, the Uneven Bars. She's the current United States national champion on this event. Very nice ganger, and that's her coach stepping in the spot, Stormy Eaton with the Desert Devils. Big release move. Beautiful dis oh, a little bit short on the landing, but a very tough dismount, full twisting double back. That is with Crandall. Look at the height on that reverse hect and perfect distance from the bar. The judges look for catching that bar level with the high bar. Your shoulders should be right across from the bar. And a big dismount. There's the full twist. Two flips. That's when you're glad the judges aren't there, though. Now here's Lance Ringwall. Youngest member of the 1988 Olympic team in 20 years back in 1988. A member of both the 89 and 91 World Championship teams, Tim. And this is his best event. He's the Goodwill Games gold medalist on high bar. And he is wild. 
<laughs> His first release really skill to catch up. Once again, he is on the recovery trail. Had a real serious injury, had to pull out of the last World Championships. He certainly one of our veterans. He'll show us a beautiful dismount here. Double laid out, Summerside. Oh, what a wonderful landing. And from now, now going to the University of New Mexico. Coached by Ed Birch. Let's take a look at this dismount one more time. He'll flip in a completely stretched body position. It's called a laid out double somersault. Beautiful extended form in the air. Boy, I hope this kid can come back from that injury. He is a good one. U.S. Olympic gold will continue from the fall of Los Angeles and more of today's stars on this presentation of the Hilton Superstars of Gymnastics. Welcome back to the Forum in Los Angeles, where U.S. Olympic gold is focusing on gymnastics, young and old. And here's Betty Okino, a great year in 1991, a knee injury, leg injury in January of this year, battling back. And here is a performance by a veteran of our team, very successful, the all-around champion in the McDonald's America Cup last year at a first competition since that injury, Kathy. And even more important, she's the bronze medalist at the World Championships on this event. She's beautiful on the balance beam. I think you know she was born in Africa, moved to Romania, but has been in the United States since the age of two. Another Bella and Martha Caroli product. But she saved it. Just a little bit of fight in her there. This is gorgeous. Oh, <laughs> she did it! She did the triple. That is exactly what won her the bronze medal at the World Championships. No other gymnast in the world has ever done that. Or dismount pass. It's two back handsprings to a double back. And especially coming off that injury, it's terrific to see her back in shape and ready to go. Some might say, Kathy, well, she had a little bobble, but that's not the point. The point is she is back. This is unbelievable. A triple turn, a double turn is hard, but look at that. Yeah, it's it may hard not enough on the as, floor. It may not look as hard, but it is so difficult. And very risky. Dismount was well done. As I said, keep in mind, she is coming off from an injury to her leg. So to be able to do that at this point is terrific. Quickly to Jared Hanks from the University of Oklahoma. He is having his best year in gymnastics. His first release to Kachev. Right into a giant, he'll do one more for us. Right into a Ginger, two in a row. Just recently won the McDonald's American Cup and also the Winter National, so he's currently ranked our top gymnast in the country. He does one of the biggest dismounts in the book. Double twisting, double layout, two twists, two flips. <laughs> Great routine. He truly is one of the most talented gymnasts I've ever seen. He can do so many different skills and do them well. He really does. Looking at Jared's dismount here, double twisting, double layout. Jared Hanks at the University of Oklahoma, 
Our evening is about over, but still due up is the current world champion, Kim Zamesko. Our final performer of the evening, Kathy Kim Zemeskel, had quite a performance in the world's last year in Indianapolis. And this was tremendous. Watch the landing. You can't do it any better than that. <laughs> and at a more opportune time than at the World Championships. Of course, that wonderful U.S. team won the silver medal. And Kim got a perfect 10 for her vault in the world. And a big kiss from coach and a big lift from coach Bella Caroli. And now, at the forum, our final performer, the world champion, Kim Zemesko. And this was the event where she clinched her all around world title. <laughs> on this one. And it's like that every single time. Just to give her a 10 here, I think the crowd will do it. What a great way to end a great evening. This is just dynamite. Count them, one, two, backs and she's not done yet a high double back and our evening is over the Hilton superstars of gymnastics on u.s olympic gold we'll be back in just a moment with a few final comments on a wonderful night <laughs> <laughs>